Janet Kuypers. <laughs> stuff and doing periodic table poems for you. I have to. I can't help it. I wrote 118, and it was back when the last ones didn't have names. Mm. So they still say, Una and Septium and Una and Septium. They have names now, but nope, they're staying. They're staying with the old names I have. But I'm not going to read one of those, because they're all man-made and they have a couple of stuff. But this one is a relatively shortish one for you, and it's Neodymium which is number 60. I don't like you are interested in that, but this is Neodymium, one of the periodic temples. <clears throat> I hope you like it. I'm so drawn to you. You pull me in. I just think of how you're so magnetic. With your electric charge, my motor's going. You get me charged up, thinking it's a game. You use my favorite gems, garnet and crystals, and you make every point seem laser clear. Your focus must be why I'm so drawn to you. I must come to you until you're near. And now you know how I love my glassware. So I was sent to a glass blowing lathe and a glass blowers there were making glassware with you on their eyes so that they could see. They loaned me their specks, I put them on, and through these green gray specks, the flame was gone. I, I did a double take, there was no glare. I leaned, it was leaving me to see just molten glass. Because on these glasses, you weren't alone. You worked in pairs so there so that we could see. Because to the Greeks, you were a new twin. That's where together, how you would fit in. And all this time, I was so drawn to you, and now you've proven that you can help me see, too. Changing it up for you. I'm going to go to that series of kind of destruction instruction poems. So it sounds nice and rude and raunchy. So the whole point of this whole show and doing all these pieces. Uh, this is one 2015 destruction instructions on destroying a relationship. Uh -huh. <laughs> you need a guidebook, you know, in case you don't know how. This is what this is for for you. I know you came to me for assistance, and I know I'm telling you all these don'ts, but if you really want to get rid of them, follow these simple steps on destroying a relationship. Don't pay them any attention. I mean, when they ask you a direct question, sure, you have to answer them, eventually. But then just start going about your life like they weren't even there. Forget that you have plans together. Make plans with your friends. I mean, the two of you aren't meant for each other. They're not going to want to hang around with you with your friends anyway, right? And by the way, this could be one of the reasons, the rationales for why you didn't actually invite them in the first place. Don't give them any space in your place because you don't want them to feel like they have any perspective or any permissions or any permanence in your life. Oh God, you've done that already, haven't you? You've given them, you've let them keep their crap at your place. Well then, let me guess, you're, try, you're just trying to like redecorate, maybe you could say, oh yeah, that's even worse. But well, all this stuff there is something of theirs, well, it can't be destroyed, well, maybe on accident. Because really, if you can't end a relationship, you have to cut any and all ties and strings from them in the first place. Oh. I was about to suggest, uh, suggest that you should look like you have violent tendencies, maybe clean your guns more, but <laughs> then I realized that, that acting crazy might actually backfire on you and you could get called from the cops or something, and you don't want to have to deal with that kind of big load of mess. So don't go acting crazy to drag them away, as tempting as that actually sounds. When something goes wrong, goes 
violently wrong. Don't tell your partner that you don't want this to end. Don't say that you don't want this to be a goodbye because you're living with these, you're giving them the, then these mixed signals in the first place. You're giving them this glimmer of hope that things might actually work out after all. Because really, the whole point is that you don't want this relationship to work out in the first place. Oh, don't ever say that you don't want to throw away your relationship even if you do. Please, don't let them think that you're vested in this relationship anymore. And another thing, when something goes wrong, goes violently wrong, don't tell them that you're sorry. God, no, that's the worst thing you could do. Don't open a window for them to think that you might be at fault. I don't even care if you are at fault or not, but the thing is, the last thing you do is to actually tell them that you're sorry for anything. I know this might, they might cling. I know they might be desperate, but you said that you wanted to be free, and I, I'm only trying to help. You might not like it. You might, this might seem counterintuitive sometimes, but the key is not to think about what you're doing. Yeah, it might hurt, but that's the point, isn't it? <laughs> I'm ending a relationship. Science and I know how to be cruel to people, and then I'm gonna find me a little poem that I wrote yesterday. And at you, bless you, I heard somebody sneeze. And I've never written a poem in my life about being a poet or writing a poem. And this is as close as I get, and I wrote it yesterday. And it's called Quilled for Poets. What metaphor should I adhere to? Should I pen metered rhyming sonnets with my quill to share at the town square? Should I wallow in liquor as I pen the ills of our generation for no one who will listen? Should I look over at my cat, arching her back and posing for me because she wants attention more than poets? At the end of the day, the night is still long and I cannot decide what options to embrace. So I sit here, contemplating metering out my grievances on the printed page, until I pause, look out my window, and watch the world go by.